The Linux Action Show is created by Jupiter Broadcasting. It's sponsored by Ting. Go to last.ting.com to save off your first device or plan and DigitalOcean. Go to digitalocean.com and use the promo code Here's the Thing, all one word like you're slurring it, and spin up your own Linux rig for free. And Linux Academy. Go to linuxacademy.com slash unplugged and invest in your mind while saving some money. Welcome to the Linux Action Show, episode 448. My name is Chris. My name is Noah. Hello, Noah and Mr. 20 Degrees Below Weather. Guess what? We have a big show coming up on this week's episode of the Linux Action Show. It really doesn't matter what we're going to talk about, but we are actually going to talk to Yas from the NextCloud project and find out all the new cool things about NextCloud and why you should be running it. And if you're still using Google Apps, you're a bad person, and we'll tell you why. Coming up in second half of this show. But coming up in the news, we'll talk about a zero day that's hitting Ubuntu, Fedora, OpenSUSE, you know, all of the Linuxes, plus that brand new Ubuntu. Yeah, it's got an opinion about swap files, and we'll tell you if they're crazy or not. And then Microsoft's ribbon UI, you know, that one you've coveted. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know the ribbon UI. <laughs> Woo! Anyways, the ribbon UI is coming to LibreOffice. We'll tell you about that. Plus, we've got feedback, and then Yoss joined us, and we'll talk to him. But Noah, before all of that, you know what we got? We got picks and ones that you use every single week. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we'll start with the ones that I use every single week, like this Uber self-driving car in San Francisco that's unlicensed, it's not legal, and I'm using it right now. Uber doesn't want to unnecessarily accelerate the adoption, but rather take its time focusing on particular cities and neighborhoods while building a database of driving patterns. It doesn't want to unaccelerate. Let's, let's listen. What was that? Uber doesn't want to unnecessarily accelerate the adoption. Unnecessarily accelerate the adoption of driverless cars. However, they're going to go ahead and launch driverless cars in San Francisco with no legal authority. And when they do it, that's right, Ubuntu machines. Look at that, Noah, right there. But it's rather almost take like rolling was not powerful enough, and they had time. to something stable. Sorry. I'm sorry. You don't even believe <laughs> that sorry. anymore. You don't even, no, you're, you, now you're that no, guy. No. Now you're like a parody of your former self. You're still like touting the, you're like, you're like here, you're still touting the LTS line, but you don't even believe it anymore, man. I know, I know. I got Arch on my laptop. So, Sorry, okay, back to the show. So they're using Volvo S SUVs, they got LiDAR up on top, and they're running Ubuntu Linux, and they're like, you know, self-driving and running red lights and whatnot. But uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's ha, uh, you and I, here's another, here's another shot of it running Ubuntu. You and I, uh, looking at all the different self-driving technologies for this show, all of mm -hmm. them have been running Linux. All yep, of them. 100%. 100, 100% have been running Linux. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I was watching this on YouTube a couple of nights ago with the lady up on the big screen TV. We're just, you know, just watching The Verge. And to see Ubuntu come up, uh, two things really, really struck me. Uh, first of all, good job, Canonical. Second of all, what the hell, guys? Install your updates. Every single time I see this, there's an update manager Right there with updates to be installed. Do you see it right there, when, Noah? Do you see I want to explain something to you. When you are relying on this computer to function as driving the car, you cannot risk updates breaking your system, okay? <laughs> it's not just good enough that they're on LTS. They can't be having the system change from right out from under them all the time. No, so you, that's why. You really got to be careful because Linux is so scary. Linux is so dangerous. <laughs> It's so risky. Most of the web runs on servers powered by Linux. Yeah, but you know what the fact is? It's for people who like to mess with computers. Yeah, so you better be really careful. You better be really careful. Actually, we're teasing because that's all crap. It's all shit. Everything you know is wrong. We're going to tell you why coming up in just a little bit in the Linux Action Show. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, DigitalOcean. Go over to DigitalOcean.com and create an account. And then apply the promo code. Here's the thing. One word. Put it all together. Like you're slurring it like a gentleman. Here's the thing. You get to be a $10 credit over DigitalOcean. It's a simple and easy way to spin up your own Linux server on demand. You can get started at $5 a month. $5. $5. $5 a month over DigitalOcean.com. And, of course, if you use our promo code, here's the thing. You get $10 credit. You can try out their, like, Two cents an hour rig, three cents an hour, five cents. They got they got all different rigs with block storage you can apply. And DigitalOcean has dedicated dedicated data centers in New York. They got them in freaking San Francisco, Singapore, Amsterdam, London. 
None of them, though, are as important as Toronto, where Mr. Allen freaking Jude. Right, Noah? Right? Yes. Anything yeah. Allen does is great. Yeah, it's just and the data centers ought to be near him because then things work better. So you have all of your droplets uh, in in Toronto? No, no. Huh? Actually, the what? majority of my droplets. Actually, you know what's funny? For the most part, our amazing. We have internet that is amazing here, and so I don't really care where droplets are because like they all actually work well for me here. I happen to put a lot of them in San Francisco, so that you're because a liar. latency is a you're thing. A big, and you're a I'm big, not a, I'm you're not a like, big liar. You're a big, big brown liar. See, I would go on the portal and take a screen cap and send it yeah. to you, but I have a feeling yeah. this is like no. you've passed no. 100 hey, times today okay. when you've trolled hey, me. Hey, Sorry. internet. Hey, internet. I'm watching live right now. How hey, many internet. times did Noah go black and white? How many times did Noah go black and white? Yeah, you what got does it. That have to do? What does that have to do with my droplets? Nothing. That's why you should do droplets, because the Grand Forks, North Dakota internet sucks. That's what I'm saying. You're saying like you got good internet? I'm saying you don't got good internet, because I spent the first 45 minutes of my day with the black and white, and you're all like- I was connected. You're all like- I was connected to a dude in Noah. Germany. My in name is Germany. Noah, and I've got great internet, and it doesn't really matter what data center I use. Meanwhile, you're black and white all day long, but whatever, it's fine. Well, I tell you what, here's the good news. Because of their snapshot capability, I can move a droplet from one data center to the other. So maybe I should go move them all to. Do they have one in Chicago? I'll move it to Chicago. And I can just take a snapshot and move it over. No, and I, you know hold what? On. The other thing is, they allow you to. Hey, hold on. They allow you to do this IP thing where you can get like one IP and yeah, point it to any droplet you want. It's called so, the floating IP, yes, no? The I, floating I, IP. I, no, I'm trying not to use the, the, the language that oh, people Oh, you're not using the buzz terms. I got you. I got you. Yeah. The f Yo, damn it, Noah. How dare you? How dare you use the promo code here's the thing? All one word, like you're slowing it. How dare you, sir? I wanted to save ten dollars. I know you're a maniac. Okay. DigitalOcean.com. Go spin up a Linux server. Oh, what's that? You want to try out next cloud? Do it on DigitalOcean. Damn it! It's Christmas. It's Christmas. I don't even. Noah, I can't. Yes. Noah, can I? Can I just? Noah, I don't you even. Can. You think I, so? I, I feel the need to remind you that you're on air and yeah. we're doing a show. So I, I it's just that they're, they're, they're <laughs> not. They're, Noah, they're not doing. Here's the thing, and it's Christmas, Noah. Wait, really? Yeah. Who's not? I don't the know. audience? No, it's. Just, I just made them up. Oh. Yeah, we're actually. Well, all you people that Chris made up, all of you need to go to yes, digitalocean.com. Yes. Use the. Phone, yeah. Use the phone, start up site. Or something. Just do something. They have guides. It'll tell you what to do. If you don't know what to do, they find your reason. I know, to, and to I keep making this paper months. noise. Yeah. You know, like I feel like you I should be serious because I'm making the paper noise, yeah. Noah. Yeah. I don't have anything on my paper though. It's just you know. <laughs> a ghost for you. <laughs> okay. No, no, that sucked. <laughs> DigitalOcean.com, use the promo code, here's the thing. Go get a Linux server with SSD storage and incredible pricing. <laughs> DigitalOcean.com, promo code, here's the thing. Thanks, DigitalOcean. Merry Christmas to you guys. And you know what? They didn't have no snow on their fronds. All right, so uh, we got to move on. Um, I, I, I feel like you're, you're throwing me some sort of email client, and I'm just finally wrapping my head around N1, and now you're like, hey, here he is an email client that helps you master the art of email. And I, I didn't even know email was an art. I didn't it, even it know. It is an art. It's, it's, it's a lost art, really. Kind of like navigating without a GPS. But that's another story for a different an time. An art you lost Here's years ago. Here's what appeals to me. Here's <laughs> I, I never had that art. <laughs> so anyway, here's what I like about this email client. Okay, ah! I, Recently, I have been... Ah! I'm talking about the email client. I'll tell you what I like. And so the thing is, I am constantly looking for very, very polished solutions that I can use as a drop-in replacement for proprietary. Now, I'd love to tell you that this email client is open source. It's not. I would love to tell you that it's free. It's not. It is until like 10 users and then you got to pay. So it's not free. But here is so that it has that not going for it. But here's what it does have going for it. Apparently, it's a drop-in replacement for Outlook. So it lets you do tasks. Yeah, it lets buddy. you do calendars. It lets yeah, you do buddy. email. Now, here's... Now, now here's the but. There's a but to every one of these things. So it's it's a great enterprise solution. I think it would work very well. And if you use Thunderbird, they have extensions for all that stuff, so you don't really need it. Oh, oh are you done? Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> is this last is, is the last three weeks of the show been about you moving this one client to Exchange? Is that what's up? Actually, 
to be honest with you, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. That's, that's a lot of money. Yeah. However, however, this kind of looks like it's better than N1, which is what I use in some ways. So I'm kind of feeling like I'm, I need to like try this out. I kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Stop. Here's the thing I like. You ready for this? Stop checking your email so often. On average, we check our email 96 times a day. There's, that mm -hmm. is. Not you though. No. You don't check your email 96 times. If I can get you to read one email a year, I'm lucky. One now that's that's rough, dude. That's rough. That's rough. If you were coming to me, you're saying if if you came to me, and you said one email a week. I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. But one email a year, one email a week. I'm just that's saying fair. before. Okay, just before we had Telegram, Viber, whatever. Before that, that came yeah. about, it was yeah. virtually impossible to communicate yeah. with you electronically. It was. It's you're right. You're right. And you know, because yeah. the problem is, is that email comes with like all these assumptions, like. Everybody that yeah. sends me an email has their them. own unique, precious expectation <laughs> on that email. And that's super <laughs> adorable and cute, but I cannot be withheld to that. And I'm sorry. I just, I, 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 under, I understand that email is like what we've used since like AOL was a thing. And we all super respect yeah. that. And oh my God, and it's it, super important. It's highly efficient and yeah. it allows no. you to organize things. No. Yeah, highly great. efficient? No. Day. No. Highly, highly efficient? efficient? No. Highly Decentralized? Efficient. Yes. Highly Ugly efficient. Hugely efficient. Hugely efficient. Hugely. Huge. Big, big league. Big league. No, not big league. Big league. Big league. They send, they, they answer, they, I send the emails, they answer my emails. They read my emails. What they I do. really, what I really like about it, no, and I think you probably like a lot too, is this iMac shot they have here. That was that was the first thing that drew me to it was that it ran on on Apple and then as a, as a side bonus running it on my Mac I also figured I'm gonna try it on Linux so that made me happy and uh, you know let's just stick with Gmail. <laughs> All right. What oh, a good man! This show is going down the hill yeah. fast. So let's talk about Piler and you know it's funny an like app that Chris is going to use now that we've shown it. For the rest of his life, because he uses all the apps. Hey, all you know, the do you know how much I hate you on the inside right now? So, uh, <laughs> Piler is a secure email archive solution. And <laughs> I didn't mean to make the last three weeks about of the Linux Action Show about... <laughs> That was personal switch you away from exchange project, but this kind of goes right along with that. Piler yeah. is a secure email archive, and uh, this is really nice, especially if you have clients that have a legal reason to archive the email like I have in the past. It's a viable alternative to a lot of other commercial solutions. It has a really nice GUI written in PHP. Yeah, you know you want it, and it has lots of different authentication methods, methods including you can have users to access the archive that are authenticated against an existing Active Directory, LDAP, Google OAuth, two-factor authentication, IMOP, and IMOP, <laughs> IMAP, IMAP, and POP3. IMAP. Yeah. Uh, and so it allows you to set different archiving and retention rules. You can do legal holdings. You can do deduplication, digital fingerprinting, tagging, uh, exporting, bulk import and export, auditing. You can support Google Apps. If you need an email archive for your company, Look at Pillar, P-I-L-E-R, and that's at mail, mail Piler, M-A-L, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm spelling like I'm from Grand Forks, M-A-I-L-P-I-L-E-R.org. It's a great app. I, uh, I, I'll check. I'll check in with you in three months, and uh, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it's still going. Since you use all the apps all the time, you know, you keep time. you keep telling me to uh, to uh, help you with this exchange migration. Have you looked at backing it up to Piler or something like that? Like, what are you going to no, do? I didn't. No, I, I didn't, and that would have, that, actually this would be a really amazing app. What I'm finding out is uh, the 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 deeper I get into this nonsense, the the more I'm finding out that uh, that there are so many little tiny things, and somebody may or may not have predicted this, so many little tiny itty bitty detail things that are not really hosted on Exchange itself, but rather it's in in the in the client form. And so if I could find a way to back all of that stuff up properly, I could then have data to work with to import it properly. Yeah. And of course, I would need a good enterprise mail client like what I recommend that you don't like. But, you know, no, actually, I that. mean, it's 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 not that I don't like it. And, and in fact, I, I actually, the more you talk about it, the more excited I am about it. So maybe we'll talk more. But uh, I just want to stop and say right here, if you're not an email fan, don't worry. There's plenty of other great picks that we have had in the past. Go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash, is it last picks? L-A-S picks? Is that what yes. it is? 
Yep. Yep. And it's mostly up to date. And you can really load up a new Linux box, an Android box, etc., with some great open source Linux applications. JupiterBroadcasting.com slash last picks. Yeah? Yeah? What? And all of which are installed on Chris's computer because he uses them. I don't know why that's a joke. That's that's for real. That... I don't know. I can't get over it. What? And the fact that you won't admit it is driving me what, nuts. What, 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 Blue what? Proximity. Are you using Blue Proximity to unlock your computer when your phone gets close to it? Uh, I, sorry. I'm, I'm oh, sorry. okay. All right. So um, the the app picks that don't suck dick, those are the ones that run on, the, <laughs> run on my machine. <laughs> <laughs> I so in other words, in other words, what you mean to be saying, Bro, Chris, I got is that you use the app picks that you like and discard the ones that you Bro. don't, which is exactly what I do. Bro, I got the AUR up in this biz. I got the AUR, so I just install them when I you talk about Available is not the same as not having as having <clears> them installed. There's a different <throat> one. It's a repo. One is installed. It matters. I actually have quite a bit of them installed. You'd be surprised. In fact, I would say this, Noah. I would say for every app pick we install, I've installed three apps on my machine. Bare minimum. Yeah, that I, that I believe. That Some I believe. weeks. I mean, I try the apps. It's not like I just find them on the internet. I try them. I look at them. I play with them. I just don't keep them if I don't like them, which is oh, exactly no. what you do. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. Every, every single app I've either spotlighted or picked, I really uh -huh. use all the time. <laughs> Well, yeah, of course, course. yeah, me too. Every app pick that I have found that I really like, I use all the time. It just so happens that there are seven of them. Because <laughs> so. I do the other 100 of them? <laughs> no, 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 seven seven that I have installed. Is, is I, simple Doubt, you were, Simple Doubt was your pick. It's the one of the seven that's installed in my computer yeah, right now. I know. That's why I don't understand what's happening right now. I don't even understand what your, what your concern is. Like, I install them. I try them. You, you I try them, and then you just either uninstall them or don't no, reinstall them never. when you reformat. Yeah. Totally false. <laughs> how, can, how can you believe that? How can because you believe? I, because I'm looking at the list of things that I just, I know for a fact that, that some of these are installed in your computer. Give me one. Give and me I one. Just, I, I just I gave you like six before we started. No, I go find more. No, Screen Studio is Screen Studio still on there? One hundred percent. Use it on a weekly basis. Okay, all right. Um, I'm sure I could find more. No, you can't. I guarantee you can't. I really on that pick list. That is the best oh fucking applications in open source. I really use all I, of them. I work my ass off for that list. Go ahead, F try. Dot, F dot Lux. Every every single day, if not F dot Lux, I use Redshift. Right, One of the two. So that'd be have you got for one? So you want to? No, no, you no. Two I, have it on, I have it on multiple machines. Li li Lifograph? All the time. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. I really use all these apps. Really, I don't. And listen, you're not. You're not. You're not. I'm. I'm, I'm so far from. I'm so far from. <laughs> you're so far from convincing me. There's. I. I refuse. Here's there, the thing. There, I'm How sure many years some. have you done this I'm, show? I'm sure there's more some. More than I agree. some. Yeah. More than some. I'm saying there are probably a thousand things on here, and there's maybe a couple hundred no, on your. Computer I say. Things, I but, say no more than ten. Uh, I would bet you there's more. No more oh than ten. God. No more than ten. All right. All right, here's what we're going to do. Since you're really sticking to your guns on this, the uh -huh. next time I'm there, yeah. I'm going to go through every single one of these applications, and I'll make you a tabulated yeah. list of are which you ones check, you don't have are you gonna check which all, ones are on the site. Are you going to check all 30 computers I use to make these shows? Are you going to check all 30 computers? Yeah. Well, I assume that if you're demoing, it would be on AirMaster, right? No. Uh, not so, I, some of these I genuinely use as my everyday <sighs> workflow. That's why they're in these app picks. Linux at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash last picks. I'm just saying. I use those shit okay. on all these. You don't believe me. I no, can't believe not even, this. Not even close. Can, here's why I use them. Here, it's, it's really simple. I use them for, to do my job, and then I'm like, oh, man, I should totally mention this on air. And then I mention it. And sometimes I've been using it for six, seven, ten months before I even talk about it on air. Mm -hmm. You don't I'm, believe me. I'm just not buying it, man. I'm just not buying it. I just, I'm, there's no way. I, there are so many obscure apps that we cover on the show like, that like it works very well. And yet, have, I, I, and there's yet, a whole list of them. I can't. And yet I am giving you all the time you need in our first segment to name a single app and you have not named one. Etcher. Did you use Etcher or do you just use DD? Are you joking? I use Etcher all the time. Alt Yo drop down council. Yes. I, I know for a fact. Come on, man. I yes. use their computers. You have Blake installed. You don't use Alt Yo. I don't it even remember doing it. It depends on the desktop environment. I absolutely do use it. 
What does that? You have gnome upstairs. You have gnome downstairs. You have gnome on your laptop, and you have the M- Mate on, on the hold on, on the OBS hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I want to go all in on this. I got to paint a picture. I got to go. I got to get in the zone. I got to paint an oil picture of what it looks like from Grand Forks of what Seattle looks like. Okay, uh, I'm seeing three computers. Two of them are Macs, running Mac OS, and one computer is running Linux. And I think on that computer has GNOME and Gedit. Yeah, okay, I understand why you feel this way. Yep, that's I understand. I'm so I'm so <laughs> confused. I'm so confused. So I I just I I don't I don't even. But, but uh, Bombono DVD authoring program. Yep, yep. You made any DVDs this week, Chris? Are you really kidding me? Any any time I ever have to cut a DVD, anytime, that's where I go. Anytime. That's my go-to. I love that application. It's my go-to the moment I have. And you know what? Hey Noah, do I did I yes. or did I not install a DVD burner and a Blu-ray burner in my latest PC? No, you didn't. That's oh, false. That's dude, a lie. You're gonna make me go up there and take a picture of it right now in the middle of the show, dude. You're gonna make me do you, that. Man. I'm telling you, man. It's I'm gonna go all up the there. Is right behind you. What? I'm gonna go up there. I'm gonna take a picture of the burner, Noah. You gonna make me do it? I think you've lost his mind. You've lost your mind. You've, you've, you. It's, 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 Noah, it's got Noah. Troubleshooting was too much. What? I can't even with you right now. Can't even with you right now. So that's Piler. So that's Piler. Yeah. You can go oh. check that out. <laughs> check out your fucking emails. Have a good time, Piler. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what, dude? I'm so far beyond all of this. I have not had a good shower for three weeks. I've been having to brush my teeth in the studio. It is the worst. I don't even know how it's happening. I'm going to vlog about it next week. Jupiter bro- YouTube.com slash Chris Fisher. <sighs> my water's been frozen for three days solid. Hmm. I haven't had a shower. I've been brushing my teeth at the studio. I'll tell you all about it. YouTube.com slash Chris Fisher. This son of a bitch, he's over there. It's like, Nick. hold on. What's the negative temperature where you're at right now, dude? What's the temperature where you're at? Negative 25. Is I that believe. true? Is that true? Is that what it Okay, was? Google. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Okay. What is the temperature outside? It's minus four degrees in Grand Forks. Oh, good. It warmed up. Yeah. It was negative 14 when I got up this morning. It feels like negative 22, though, with the wind chill. <laughs> three days ago, all of my water froze. I have not had running water for three days, and it's only 20 degrees outside. I don't even know how you survive. I think you are not actually a human. You are some sort of hybrid. I wear jackets, and I mean, we went over this. I, I have a lot of layers, and it keeps me warm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do the news. Hey, it's the news, and this episode is brought to you by Blast.ting.com. Last, L-A-S dot ting dot com. Take $25 off your first device or $25 in service credits. Oh, did you smell that? No, it smells like snow. It smells like Grand Forks, North Dakota snow. Oh, ting, man. Last dot ting dot com. L-A-S dot ting dot com. Get a device. Get it. You know, I don't care. I'm not going to judge. I'm, I'm not sitting here. I'm not being Mr. Judgmental. Last dot ting dot com. You can get a device for $25 off or... $25 in service credit. $25 in service credit. Noah, mm-hmm. if I just gave you $25 in Ting credit, what could you do? Yep. First thing I would do is I would go activate the spare phone, spare Nexus 5 phone I have, and I would use it. I would use it as a dedicated work phone. I've always wanted like a personal cell phone and a work phone, and uh, I've been toying with the idea. And if I had $25 in credit, because the thing is work phone, I don't get a, t- I don't take a ton of work calls That's right. that goes through the call center or the dinner. Really, just if somebody needs to ask me a brief question, then I work get phone. Work call. So I twenty five dollars would probably get me at least two months of service. I think I get two months out of service out of twenty five bucks, which now, is amazing considering back when I was with another carrier, I was paying like one hundred and thirty dollars for. Yeah, a phone. and you know what's crazy, Noah, is I have a uh, empty case. It doesn't even have a cell phone. It's not CDMA. Mm-hmm. And you bought it's, a SIM card for it. It's not GSM. It's not pay for what you use. It's not just yeah. what you use is what you pay. It's six dollars a month yeah. for your phone, and this is your use. Uh-huh. This is just they a don't case. You for the cases. No, this is an empty case. They don't. But you yeah. know what? They don't charge you to activate. Them. You know what, yeah. Noah? You know what's weird? Do you want to know what's weird? Hmm. I'm getting a call. It doesn't report in on, on your case. No, I'm getting a call, Noah. On your case. I'm getting case? a call You're on. Getting my, a call. Yeah. Ting keeps rates simple. We don't make you pick a plan. Instead, you just use your phone as you normally would. 
How much you use determines how much you pay each month. What? You can have as many devices as you want on one account. That's good, because when you use more, you pay less per minute, message, or megabyte of data. Your usage, plus $6 per active device on your account, plus taxes, is your monthly bill. Simple. That's what we mean when we say... Mobile. That makes sense. <laughs> so, levels check? <laughs> I mean, we could do the show like this if you really like it like this. What? I, I was going to say... No, hold, on, hold, on. hold on, Kyra. <laughs> Last hunting. <laughs> oh, my God. Last hunting. <laughs> Last hunting. That's, that's, that's what he's trying to tell you. It's just he's having a hard time today. <laughs> yes. No water, no showers for three days. Don't do that to you. Lack of solution. I, I tried. And, hey, and his, hey, babe, you know, come here. Hard to come keep here. track of Did, audio tell levels people, when you tell got so many apps ting. installed com. everywhere. Hey, no, shut up. Last.ting.com. Last.ting.com. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Last.ting.com, right? Last dot, la, the last thing.com? Yeah, no, no last termination fee. Lastthing.com. Yeah, no, 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 no. There's not a single termination fee. No. And there's no contract. And did you know there's no contract? I didn't know I that. Did, you know, Chris didn't know that, but I knew that. No contracts yeah. at yeah. at lastting.com or whatever. Last the last thing. L a s l a s l a s dot ting dot com. I mean, that's shut up, baby. You're getting in the way. You take this. Thanks. Last dot ting dot com and a big thank you to Ting for sponsoring the Linux Action Show. L a s dot ting dot com. You know, if you're gonna give the gift of mobile for the holidays, go screw yourself. Get Ting. <laughs> so I just want you to know. I just I'm just gonna tell you. I don't know what has gotten into you today. I don't, I, but I just want to tell you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> if I because here's the thing. The problem is like when we run into problems with like technology things and things not working, or I ask a dumb question, or you sit and Google things for 20 minutes. Like the, those are the kind of things that ordinarily would drive you nuts, and then you would get super upset about them. And I, I just I want to tell you right now. Yeah. I could deal with crazy unhinged Chris. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Just, I love it. It's, it's, a, ho- it's, it's a holiday special. It's a holiday special. Last.ting.com. It's a holiday com. something. I'll tell you something. Yeah, it is. Thank you to Ting for not only sponsoring the Linux Action Show for like a couple of years, but being my freaking mobile service provider, not just for CMA, but also for GSM. And they have both of them. Last.ting.com. And check out their blog. They got some great stuff. Last.ting. L-A-S.ting.com. All right, Mr. Noah, are you ready for this? I, I don't know if I am. Are you ready? I don't know if you're ready for it. It's about nothing. Nothing. Listen, nothing could surprise me Woo! today. Nothing. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> Zero days are hitting Fedora, Ubuntu, and all those others right now. As you're sitting there comfortable around your Christmas fire and your Christmas tree, totally not doing Jewish things. This is what's concerning you. The zero day exploits which affect Fedora and others are published Last Tuesday. <laughs> I can't even, dude. I can't even pretend to care. I can't even pretend to care. Because let's be honest, Linux is... <laughs> it's not as it doesn't matter. This shit gets patched so fast. It, like, it doesn't matter. You can pretend like this is a big deal. I Look, Noah, I don't know if you noticed, but I even highlighted things mm-hmm. in yellow, red, and and blue. <laughs> That's, you know, pink, actually. That's how you know it's important. <laughs> pink. Mm. The uh, it would apply to people like me who run LTS and don't update. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so uh, here's what's going on. Uh, so this guy, his name is uh, Mr. Evans. He published on Tuesday a exploit that goes after Ubuntu, Red Hat, and other desktops. Uh, while Evans Stack won't work on most Linux, most recent Linux servers, they'll reliably compromise most desktop versions of Linux which employees at Google, Facebook, and other security-conscious companies use. So you should be really super worried about this because Google uses it, and it's not like Mac OS. In the past three weeks, there's been all kinds of compromises. And uh, this is a direct quote, so you need to be extra concerned about it. And this is the direct quote. This is the part that's supposed to scare you. Uh, Quote, I like to prove that vulnerabilities are not just theoretical. They're actually exploitable to cause real problems. That was my I'm really scared <coughs> face. 
for the audio listeners. I, I actually feel like what happens here is there's um there's really uh, there's 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 these like these jackasses out there like you that don't patch. Yeah, right. Never. I don't patch anything. Oh, Ever. you can you can joke, but Mr. Weston Digital Live. Let me let me I, find this. Hold on, Noah. I'm gonna find a. Yeah. Here I have this hardware box. It, it's it's by Western Digital, and it's version 4.2 of the Linux kernel. What matters? I'm gonna. That's, that's a Raspberry Pi. That's not a. What? 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 I update my systems. The computers are updated. Yes, there's probably some boxes that are not updated. That's probably true. And I guess if I wanted to be super concerned about it, I'd throw. Them. They're behind a firewall. I, I I'm what? Who cares? Mm. Actually, this guy is great security. Good security, but Evan's whole point is I like to prove the vulnerabilities are not just theoretical; they're actually exploitable to cause Mm -hmm. actual problems. He told that Mm -hmm. in this whole interview, he's like, "Look, guys, I'm I'm going to tell you these guys that like like Noah Chalaya, they're they're idiots. They think they're theoretically invulnerable to these." possible problems and i'm going to make sure these are real problems for these sons of mm. bitches i'm going to help stamp all of these issues out and he makes sure of it so he That's wants he wants to make an example out of people like you good good come at me bro i'll fight you 1v1 i'll no scope you that's all you got but me alive. that's all you got Here's, okay so systems i think systems are different from the embedded boxes i think the embedded boxes yes they should probably I mean, we should patch them. That would be a good thing. But when they're sitting behind a firewall, not that big of a deal. The boxes that are live on the internet that have you know publicly r- readable addresses, those are very important to keep up to date. But as you so eloquently pointed out in the first 15 seconds covering the story, the patches roll out and we we update these boxes and it, it's never really an issue. By the time people are learning about the issue about the issue, responsible disclosure means that we already have a patch in place. Yeah. And if you're updating your systems, yeah, then it's not really that big of an I issue. I agree. That's that's okay. Yeah. That's number one and two and three. Here's number four. It's not any worse than any other platform. We're still light years ahead of Windows and Mac OS. So I, I really don't get where there are, there are people that live their whole days concentrating on fixing some of these security vulnerabilities because they know that how much the Internet relies on the backbone of Linux. Yeah. And so really, if you were going to bank on anything, you'd bank on the 90 percent of people that are using an operating system. So you're to totally secure. right, Noah. And uh, what this vulnerability is preying on is something we covered in TechSnap about two weeks ago. It's kind of funny. It's a vulnerability in GStreamer. So if you're using Plasma Desktop with with GStreamer as your backend, or you're using GNOME, yeah, you're technically vulnerable. And here's here's what the issue is. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's so dumb, and it gets so much coverage. You ready for this, dude? Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. You ready for mm-hmm. the how you how you get actually affected by this vulnerability? That's such a big deal that we're talking about it here on the Linux Action Show. Huge. You play a Super Nintendo file mm-hmm. that has music in it where mm-hmm. a G streamer in the back end, it fires mm-hmm. up an emulation environment that matches the CPU and the MIDI environment of the original Nintendo. And it plays oh, all those files based on the instructions. Oh. And because it's firing so up an entire emulation environment, because it's firing yeah. up an entire emulation environment, it is possible yeah. within that emulation environment to execute arbitrary code. And that's what the I issue knew is. It, I, I knew it was good. I, I told the guys when we were setting up our OS ticket installation, no playing Super Mario on the production server for OS ticket. They didn't listen to me. I, no. And I knew it. This I knew it happened, was a bad no? idea to be playing, yeah. playing GoldenEye yeah. on my simple help I server. Know. And yet I did that too. So I... Jeez, yeah, somebody could have told me. That. How are you going to recover from this compromise of your Linux environment, Noah? How are you going to recover? I don't know. I, stop using Linux. That's yeah, the only I guess. answer. I'm gonna Switch have to, to I'm Windows. Gonna have to go over right? to that free BSD stuff. I would recommend yeah, Windows, Azure. Yes. I would recommend Windows. Azure. Yeah, go check yes. out Azure. Yes, Azure. 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 Yes, Azure. 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 <laughs> okay. Next story on Linux Action Show. Uh, Ubuntu 1704. I wasn't going to cover this. I wasn't going to cover this. Yeah. I- I can see why. Yeah. It's not like it's a big deal. It is not a big deal. I don't think it is a big deal. Ubuntu 7. The next version of Ubuntu. It's always a big deal. F word you. That dude. is going to be the most that is going to be the most prolific Linux distribution in the VPS world the day it launches. I think it's a big deal. All right, I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to eat popcorn. I'll watch the comments. Okay. Ubuntu right. 1704 is swapping partition files for Oh my gosh. Wait for it everybody. Wait for it, everybody. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. It's swapping 
swap partitions for swap files. Kind of like a page file in Windows. Yeah. It's, I think it's. I think it's. I think it's a moderately big deal. I think it's a moderately big it deal. Is, because, it is. Because it's a major Linux distribution. They are. Ch and here's the thing: the swap partition thing has bitten me in the butt more than once. Trying to decide how big it's going to be ahead of time. My understanding is with this file is that you can change it. Yeah, without having to repartition your drive. Which I, I think it's really just it's just it's just popcorn to you, huh? Okay. All right. Well. Yeah, it's popcorn. Just, uh, it's popcorn. I'm going to sit back. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. This is an obvious thing, dude. Okay. When I when I would switch to Linux, I you know, I mean, I mean, I I'll grant you. This is like 1989. But when I was looking at Linux and Unix, I thought it was strange. Mm -hmm. And cool. Strange cool. and cool. That yeah. Linux had its own swap partition. Like, all right, this is something different than Windows. All right, I'm down with this. I'm going to do this. It's different swap partition. I'm going to dedicate. I'll never use more than this amount of swap RAM. This is going to be like my swap partition, man. I'll never go more than two gigs. This is going to be good. This is going to be sweet. This is going to be locked in. I'm going to dial this in. I know now in 1999 exactly how this machine is going to be used in 2017. What's the problem? No problem. I'm going to go ahead and dial this in. It's stupid, right? Swap files, it's no big deal. It's it's literally, it's the definition of not a big deal. But it's what our entire community is talking about this week. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'm glad that uh, we are able to bring some coverage to the uh, swap file versus the swap partition. It's excellent. I really like it when the computers win at the things that they do. That's my generic response to things. 1704 will feature the new Switch. To swap files. That's all you need to know. That's all. You, that's that. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to know. All right. Now I got to talk about something that's really important to me. I've kind of been rushing through the news for this exact story. This is important. Nothing else matters. Warsaw. War freaking sow appears to come to an end. Noah, the thing that you just told me to install. Yeah. Now we're ending it. Exciting. Warsaw is an example of. Uh, what we used to do before Steam was a thing, we had these games that were really great and the open source community cared. And we created these really super great games games. And then and then Steam came along and we're like, ah, it doesn't matter. Steam. And so things like Warsaw have sort of faded away. And there was a recent post by the former lead developer who explains, I just wanted to remind everyone once again that I am no longer involved in Warsaw. Nor have I been in since, you know, the last six months. <laughs> Uh, what's left on the website is just uh, kind of relics. Development infrastructure and all the other kind of things have kind of gone away. They've been abandoned. And so uh, feature requests or bug fixes, they're kind of going on deaf airs. No, nobody's hearing those things, Noah. Nobody. We got Steam. We got almost 3,000 games in Steam this week. Nobody cares about the open source shooter. Who cares, mm -hmm. Noah? We got 3,000 games in Steam. Do you care? Well, I think well, I do care to a certain degree because, first of all, I when it comes to proprietary stuff, much like the cloud, I just don't ever necessarily bank on it being there tomorrow. It's here now; it works well now. For, I, I have no guarantees that in six months, Steam's not going to Valve is not. I hope they don't, but I have no guarantees that six months from now, Valve's not going to say, "You know what? This Linux thing, it's not working out," and so we're pulling the plug. And how do you how do you explain now, that not, to like Dylan that. or Little Noah? How do you explain that? Well, so part of it is that I try to introduce them in into things that I know that they're going to be that are going to have good longevity to begin with, right? I try to control that experience to a certain degree because I know what they don't that if they if they buy into the latest and greatest and every flashy thing that that may not be there and then I have to deal with the consequences when it's not there. Um and so to a certain degree I've structured it so that you know him and I play uh, things that I think are going to have good longevity. Now I happen to believe that Valve is a great company and that their best interest is to stay on Linux. And so I think that it probably will be there. But it, if if I could get little Noah, if we were starting over and we were starting a first person shooter game, I would definitely start with something like this and get him addicted and move into it because I would think that this would have a longer longevity and a greater support for Linux long term. And apparently I'd be wrong. <laughs> no, no, I don't think you're wrong. How do you make sure you're not? Uh, what? Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say 2016, uh, this game is being discontinued and 
Steam is still available. Right. Like, how do so. you make sure you're not like betting your your children on a on a, on a technology that you know yeah, it might be around today, but in three years from now, it's not going to be the primary way you get applications on a computer. Because at the end of the day, you do want to enable them to be actual functional human beings in the world of technology. Right. Right. What are your yeah. thoughts? Uh, well, and so I, I've gotten bitten by that once already. I, I originally, I thought, I, I thought to myself, my my mother is 60 years old and I can hand her a touchscreen device and she can figure it out without really me telling her or teaching or anything, right? She just, she can figure it out. So tablets, I think are pretty intuitive. Whereas I work with, you know, 30 and 40 year old guys, not 30s, but 40, 50 year old guys that uh, they had not, they had not a lot of extensive use on computers. And so every little thing that you have to explain to them. And so I thought I'll start my kids out on laptops with mice and keyboards and so they can get that dexterity and and figure out how a desktop operating system works and later we can introduce some tablets and as it turns out the, by the time they get to be adults i don't even know if the desktop computer as i know it will even be a thing anymore the desktop computers that are most popular now are tablets and even the things that are still running desktop operating systems are running in tablet like modes yeah hmm. so i'm wrong Wow, dude! Linux Action Show at Reddit.com. I'd be curious to hear what, to know what the. Uh, well, I don't. I don't. I don't actually think you are wrong. Hmm. I think we're just still figuring it out. But uh, I. I think it's kind of a shame because Warsaw. I think is one of the great examples of an open source game. It's cell shaded. It's fast. It's based on the Quake Two engine, mm-hmm. but like iterated. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of it's, 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 it. it, it it's fading away. It's like an open source staple, and it's fading away. And all we're left with is proprietary Steam solutions. Yeah. I am very excited that Valve wants to invest in Linux. I am very excited mm-hmm. about Steam. Yeah, it, it's great that there's almost 3,000 games now, as of today, recording. There's almost nearly 3,000 games available via Steam for Linux. Shit. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even tell you how crazy that makes me feel 10 years into this mm-hmm. show. At the same time, mm-hmm. I am super sad that an open source, really innovative game is dying. Do you see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, that's sad. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter yeah. there's commercial and Steam alternatives available when the open source stuff is fading away. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that can all be wiped out with one program goes away and all of a sudden 3,000 games are now no longer on Linux. That's not entirely true, right? Because we'd have they'd have different ways, and you know the Indiegogo stuff, whatever the uh, whatever you call it, the 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 uh, play packs and stuff that you. I, I honestly feel like if Steam went away tomorrow, the community would come up with some sort of like Steam Store solution, don't you think? Like yeah, like probably, some sort of yeah, probably, yeah, probably yeah yeah probably that's probably exactly what happened. Especially like like the core games like Counter Strike, like um, those would be like like probably like standalone installers you could still load on Linux. Mm-mm. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, anyways, so Warsaw apparently it's like it's like fading. Warsaw, which I think is one of the greatest games, it's not it's not one of the most technical games. It's not one of the most like uh, look what you can do if you have these different alpha graphics with this different GPL compositor. It's not about that. It, what what Warsaw has always been is about let's take a modern game and let's. Let's update it with cell shading graphics and make it a lot of fun. And it's kind of sad to see it fade away. And I think mm-hmm. I, I, I honestly I do feel like if Steam wasn't wasn't a thing on Linux in 2016, this game wouldn't be dying. Yeah, There's yeah, other, that's true. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I, I won't make a big deal about it. Uh, moving on. What do you think about this? As somebody who's trying to recommend LibreOffice to people all the time, dude. Uh, it appears that the Microsoft Ribbon, you know, the whole, you like the Ribbon UI in Office, is oh, actually yeah. available in the latest version of LibreOffice, version 5.3, if you just poke around a little bit. Mm-hmm. Are you tempted to tell so, your clients about this? No, I'm not tempted at all. Here's the thing. So when I, so when I first, I was giving a presentation years back when Microsoft first r- introduced the Ribbon, and I couldn't find <laughs> the uh, the print button. Yeah. I'm, I'm literally standing yep. up there. and I'm, I remember talking about this. It's just, it's just it's just stupid. But here's the, the the issue that I have is that really what business users anyway, home users are a little different, but a lot of those guys are just do, using Google Docs and Notepad, to be honest. Uh, it, 
you 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 get to a point where you where you realize that what business users want is not necessarily one application or another. They just don't want to change. They don't like change. If they could, if I could set a computing environment up for business users that would look and function identically for the next twenty five years, that would be ideal to them. Yeah. And any any deviation from that whatsoever is horrible. So when Microsoft went to the ribbon UI, I had a huge influx of people that were loved LibreOffice because it functioned exactly like the Office Suite that they like had used in the last 13 years. It looked like it right. looked like Office 2013. And if you didn't like that split, you had an option. Right. And so now that they're copying this ribbon, I've never met a person, never once in my life have I ever met a person that went, you know, I really hated the file menu where I could just open and save my stuff. I really like to think of things in terms of my publish ribbon and my edit ribbon and my my views ribbon and whatever the hell else it is. That I have never, I've never, that those words, I've never heard those words. I mean, so maybe somebody's heard those words. I haven't heard those words. Nobody's ever told me. I've never heard those words. I've never heard those words. Yeah, I agree, dude. Nailed it. Yes. You can turn it on if you want. I don't know. Maybe you like maybe you like to cut yourself too. Um, hey, you know what? You know what would be great? If LibreOffice in the next version, hey, could you guys introduce, uh, could you bring back, or well, introduce your own version of that stupid dancing paperclip that asks you idiotic questions? Clippy. That would be really great. Yeah, I would, yeah Clippy. Can yeah. we bring Clippy? <clears throat> that would be great. I miss Clippy yeah, while we're implementing my Because, because Cortana has been so useful. So, yes. so yes. useful, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if we could get something like that, that would be really good. <laughs> you know what, though? If anybody's going to do the ribbon, LibreOffice has a better looking ribbon than Microsoft does. I'll give them that. The ribbon, yeah. I don't love it, but at least it's not the Microsoft Office 2007 or whatever the hell they called it. It is a legitimate can it, can ribbon. We, can we turn it off? That's my biggest yes. thing. Like, if it, if it's, if no, so, dude. If it, even if it comes off. Alt, as long as I can shut it off, that's really you all. You have to, actually, to be fair, you have, you have to, to follow the notes. You have to turn it on. You have to. Yeah, that's you, for now, though. How long before they make it default? That's my concern. <sighs> Which is fine. As long as I can shut it back off, I guess I don't really care. In Office, there was no way to that I know of to shut it off. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was it was a train wreck. At least the library office gives you the option. All right. That yeah. is the Linux Action Show's look at the news this week. If you had some news you wanted us to cover... LinuxActionShow.reddit.com, but come on. We gotta talk about the biggest story. The big story. Next Cloud 11. I am really excited to talk about NextCloud 11. I've got it installed, and I've been kicking the tires this weekend, and Yoss is joining us from NextCloud to give us the inside scoop. I want to thank Linux Academy for making this segment just all that possible. I mean, really, every single week we look at how we're going to put this show together and how we're going to dedicate our time. And thanks to Linux Academy for making this show possible every single week. LinuxAcademy.com slash unplugged. And thank you to everybody out there who goes to that URL. That lets Linux Academy know you heard about it here. And that keeps us going. And you can go over there and sign up for a seven-day free trial. That's right, a seven-day free trial for the best platform to learn more about Linux. That's what Linux Academy is. They've got real human beings that will help you. They've got a platform built on Linux for Linux users by Linux users to train you about Linux. Hands-on scenario-based labs, instructor mentoring, learning paths, course schedulers for your busy schedule, lab servers that spin up on demand. Check out their Twitter feed from time to time, too. They're, uh, they're doing different uh, bits with their different instructors, kind of giving you FaceTime with different instructors. And uh, Christopher and John discussed the new serverless concepts course, which is available on YouTube, which you can find out more about. And recently, too, They've added the machine learning course with Azure. Yes, Azure is even available over at Linux Academy because it turns out even Microsoft is making money off of Linux. And this is a great way for you to learn something that is not just going to give you a skill set that makes you more employable or a skill set that makes you more knowledgeable in a certain area, but it's going to give it to you in a way that's actually usable so when you're on the job doing the work, you can actually do it because they have hands-on scenario-based training. LinuxAcademy.com slash unplugged. And a big thank you to Linux Academy for sponsoring the Linux Action Show. And thanks to those jerks over at Linux Unplugged for letting us steal their URL. <laughs> they never saw me coming. All right, well, I'm really happy to welcome Yoss back to the Linux Action Show to tell us about NextCloud 11 and all of the shenanigans going over there. Maybe we'll get a little update on the project and all of that. Yoss, congratulations on the new release, and thanks for coming back to the show. Thank you, and I'm really happy to be here on the show. It's uh, nice to see you guys again, and of course, hi to all the audience. Yes, and it's uh, uh, yeah. 
It's late where you're at. Where is it? What's your time at where you're joining us? It's it's nine. My nine. Uh, okay. Amsterdam okay. time. All right. Not oh, not gosh. awful. We have done worse. So thank you for coming on and uh, chatting with us. I think we've done like 1 a.m. one time or something like that. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I haven't really checked in with you much since uh, Nextcloud was announced. I mean, we covered it obviously quite a bit when the uh, Project Fork happened. I've been installing each release personally and trying it out. So has Noah and a lot of the folks in our audience. So 11's here. There's a lot of things to touch on. I know I got a couple of favorite features that I want to talk about, but just kind of like an overall global perspective, how's Nextcloud going? How are things going along since the fork? Yeah, really awesomely well. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we did this blog post um, where I basically grabbed statistics from uh, GitHub and from uh, Olo. I think that's the old site these days. It's called OpenHub. Um, and they both give you, you know, like snapshots of how things are going and that, well, I mean, you got to have context, otherwise numbers mean nothing. So I put that against a couple of other open source file sync and share projects. Um, I'll be happy to share the link. I'll put it in the chat now and I'll later you can put it in the, the notes. Yep. Um, but I think overall it shows we're growing really fast and we're doing really well. We're the most active of all these projects. No kidding. Uh, massive amount of work done i mean obviously it shows in the release i think i mean this was a massive amount of features and and improvements that came in and well the company behind it is profitable too you know that is really cool it, it's been really nice to see so many you know potential customers and then become customers yeah and that's really that. that's about sustainability i mean to a certain degree if i'm if i'm putting some of my most trusted data into an open source project I want to make sure there's a certain level of sustainability there, especially when it's, you know, it's it's a in some sense, it's a new project. In other senses, it's not really. But in some senses, it is. So yeah, profitability right exactly. off the bat is pretty important. Yeah, I mean, you need I mean, if you want to put your data somewhere, right, you got to have the the confidence that it's going to stay around and that it can keep your software secure. Right. I mean, that is also why for 11 security has been such an important point. Mm. I mean, privacy doesn't mean much if it isn't secure. Because otherwise, yeah, you can host it yourself, but still everybody kind of has access if it has, you know, well-known and advertised security holes and if they don't get plugged frequently. Yeah. So we also have like the security bug bounty program. Anyone who finds a serious security bug can get up to 5K US dollars um, as a reward for giving us, I like that. you know, responsible disclosure of the information. I, I we fix it. I also noticed... It. In this release, you said there was a uh, in the blog post there was a significant amount of security improvements that were uh, I don't know recommended or maybe discovered by a, uh, by an NCC group. Is this a third well, party? So what we did, yeah. So this is an, uh, a British security firm. They basically um, consult companies in um, how, how do you say it? it's like if you're a large company, especially you know you you need someone to have a look at the way you work and the processes. You know, it's not so. It's a type of audit, code, essentially. Say. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. And then an audit focused on how you do it, rather than exactly what you do. Because we could, of course, let them have a look at the code as it is, as a snapshot. But what you really want to know is that you know when there's a bug found, it's fixed quickly, and that we write mm -hmm. code in a way that actually you know results in secure code. And we had them have a look, and they basically concluded in a pretty extensive report which you can download completely from our website, uh, that is looking really good. I mean, they were very positive about the way we work, very impressed, actually. So their and focus the was, are you, had, are you... Oh, oh, sorry, I just don't want to make sure. So they're not doing necessarily a code audit. They're not looking and doing like a, an audit of NextCloud 11. What they're looking at is saying, big picture-wise, this project is making the right decisions or has the right processes in place so that when something is discovered, they're taking action or they're taking appropriate action. Am I following? Yes, exactly. Yeah, but it's also about stuff like we provide training to our engineers. You know, oh, okay. we we uh, run security checks like VeraCode, for example, and a couple of other security testing uh, tools that we run over the code to look for vulnerabilities and other issues. Uh, we make developers who create a security bug fix it themselves, so they actually learn and they will bother to <laughs> prevent it in the future. <laughs> yeah, it, it's these little things that all form part of the way we work. And that NCC had a look at it and said, okay, guys, this is pretty good. This is really cool. Now, did they have any concerns? And we're very happy with that, yes. Did they have uh, any the only concern that they had was they said, look, you know, you guys need to start documenting more of this stuff. And that's, of course, they usually audit big companies, you know, where you have large teams working together. And then 
documentation is key. So obviously we will work on that, but we're a six month old company. So you can imagine, you know, not everything has a fancy PDF that describes <laughs> all the steps you need to go Fair through. Enough, yeah, we yeah. do them not- because we're all very experienced people. Uh, we've been doing this for, you know, four or five years, right? I mean, let's be honest, a dozen people, part of our team, you know, we're now 24 people, but a dozen of those come from, well, own cloud, including the four of the five people who started the project. And chat they're room. all there. And obviously they have all the experience that you can get. Go ahead, Noah. Chat room is, a chat room is asking um, the, if the NextCloud currently has or if they have plans to provide client-side encryption before sending data to the NextCloud server. Well, so there's a bit of a yes and no. We're thinking about it and looking into it. Um, to do it full all the way is really tough. It's it's something that you will simply technically not be able to do in one release cycle. So we'll have to look into putting the um, the ground the groundwork in place uh-huh. so that it'll be possible in the future. Um, the same thing uh, is actually about, for example, that a lot of people also in the Debian community have been asking about. You know, will you guys make it possible to skip releases so that you can go from say 10 to 12 without having to go through 11? And this is also something we're working on, and we've put some things in place already, including a new updater that helps with that. But this is stuff that's going to take multiple releases. So perhaps in 2017, um, but not in the upcoming release, I would how say. About, uh, how about any word on getting uh, on, uh, on docs on how to get the LibreOffice online stuff working without Docker? Yeah, I saw somebody ask that. So this is possible now. The thing you need to do though, is like really compile all this stuff for yourself. And it's a massive amount of work. And well, you know, NextCloud always, our goal has always been to make it as simple as possible, right? That's why we even worked with Canonical to have these snaps. You know, Chris was before the show talking about how easy it is on DigitalOcean to get NextCloud up and running, you know, just fire up an Ubuntu one um, and install the snap and you're up and running and it's working. And, you know, Putting down a lot of effort in, you know, doing it all yourself while there is an easy Docker container available, it, we don't think it's the best use of our time, gotcha. to be honest. I mean, we're not saying nobody should do it, because please do, but we don't think we should be doing it. There's yeah. a lot of other stuff that can be done at the same time. So, so can I can I ask you any, some details about my favorite new feature, and I bet a lot of the audience's new favorite feature, which is two-factor authentication, because for me... NextCloud is what I want to use when it's too private or too personal to put on Dropbox or anything else. I have I have a Dropbox business account, and I really don't care about Dropbox security or privacy because everything I put in that Dropbox business account, I publish that week. So for me, it's it's not about security. But then there are things like tax documents or medical forms or uh, vehicle ownership paper that I just don't – I don't want to have paper. I want to have it all digitally, and I want to have it retrievable. And I want to put it on NextCloud, but I'm, I am concerned about security. And so two-factor for me was a major feature I was waiting for. Can you give me any information about that, how it works, and maybe what it's compatible with? Yeah, so we have integrated now two two-factor authentication providers. So we wrote the backend support for this for NextCloud 10 already. Uh, however, you had to install these apps yourself, and they were kind of proof of concepts. Uh, so they weren't, you know, properly security reviewed and all that stuff. And we did that for this release. And we included two apps uh, that you have to enable. Okay. Um, there is a universal two second factor, U2F, that is basically a YubiKey, for example. It's compatible uh. with that and compatible systems. And the other one is a time-based one-time password, which is compatible with Google Authenticator, for example. Awesome. So those are the two that are now included. It's very simple. Uh, the administrator has to enable the app, and then the user goes to his or her user settings. And there, you know, if you use like the time-based one-time password, you go to user settings. You can you scroll to the two-factor authentication, and there you will simply see, you know, the familiar um, QR code. You just take a picture, and you're up and running. Awesome. So it's very simple to use, and it does what it's supposed to do: ask you for a second factor. Oh, you want to log in. I I cannot wait to play with that. Uh, I have my Nextcloud uh, system set up. I have I have a few things already uploaded to it. In fact, you know what? I'll show some uh, I'll show some screens of it here while we're talking uh, for those watching the, the video version. So uh, okay, 
So two factor obviously is kind of like the number one thing that I'm the most excited about. But yes, yeah, so I wanted to ask you about a certain scenario I'm thinking about setting up, and it, it maybe you could help in my in your answer. You could help clarify how federating these services works. So I I have uh, I have two Nextcloud instances that I want to use. I have one that's up on a droplet that's connected to the internet all the time, 24-7. And then I have one that's on a MiFi connection that comes in and out depending on where I'm at, the time of day, and and power, and how, 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 and, how and right now how hard it's snowing. Uh, and so what I was thinking was having these two work in a federation. So they're, they're not necessarily syncing everything between them, but whatever is available on either NextCloud server can easily be accessed by the other. Am I am I roughly understanding how federation can work for the average user? And if I'm not, can you set me straight? Yeah. So so the way the federation works is kind of that they act together indeed as a single network. However, what would not work in your scenario? They do not sync data. They don't cache data because the way we see it is that would be losing control. Yeah. What we want is that the moment the owner of the data would say, "Okay, I unshare this." It should be unshared. It shouldn't be cached on the other one, you know. So it's okay. kind of like mounting an external Dropbox into your next cloud. Um, so the other next cloud kind of would then act as an external storage to your next cloud, and as soon as it's offline, its data will also no longer be available. So it will not be caching stuff. It won't be syncing things. That's that's not the way we've set this up. Okay. The goal was really enable two people to work together, like it is one instance, but each of them should stay in control of their own data for 100%. And caching, we So like for Noah and I really working together on, on projects, Noah and I could have two different NextCloud servers. That sounds like a great setup. That makes a lot Absolutely. of sense. And the cool thing is even the first time you will share with him uh, your NextCloud and his NextCloud, they will exchange address books so that if you don't want to share something to someone else on his server, their name will even autocomplete. Huh. That's it's really cool. Pretty, com- pretty, pretty extensively integrated. And so the new thing that we introduced, yeah, it, it's of course nice that once you know a server, they will exchange address books. But what if you don't know a server yet? And you, for example, I would know your um, Twitter address, but I don't know anything else sure. about you. So the new feature in x 11 that we introduced is a central lookup server. And you can optionally, of course, because obviously we don't want to make this, you know, default, but you can choose to publish some of your personal information, including, for example, your Twitter account data, and that you own a certain Twitter account, which we will verify in the future. We don't do that yet. We want to have it verified even. Uh, you upload that to the central server, and then I can, in the um, shared dialog, simply type in Chris Less, and then it looks on Twitter, and the other data, and it says, oh, that's him. And then it can check whether, huh. you know, it is the right person because I can verify the Twitter account. I love that. Speaking of in- speaking of integration, is there any update on storing files on third-party services, for example, you know, Amazon S3 or Dropbox with encryption? So I couldn't hear you very well, but I think you asked uh, about storage on third-party servers, right? Like yes. um, S3. Right. Yeah, so, so we support that. Uh, as a matter of fact, what is new in this release is that we have multi-bucket support. So if you have really a lot of data on an S3 or on a, well, a compatible system, right, any object store, you will be able, well, your next cloud will put that in multiple buckets. So a lot of these object store systems, they don't oh, yes. scale well with like 2 million files in one bucket. Yeah. So uh, right now, next cloud will basically yeah. create one bucket user, which also yeah. keeps it a Actually, little so, Yas, can I, can I double down on that for a second? So uh, one of the things I hear a lot um, when I'm at events or conferences, and something I've thought a lot myself is, uh, well, I have uh, I have half a terabyte worth of data. I actually have, uh, I have 700 gigabytes that I need to sync around all the time. And I'm just worried that NextCloud isn't built to handle large data sets. And so I don't think NextCloud is going to have um, insert whatever you want uh, the the database backend or the CPU uh, processing power to to look at all my changed files or uh, you know there's all these different things that people have they're concerned about when they have a very large data set that they're syncing that they have in own cloud are there are there um, larger enterprises that are pushing this agenda forward for the next cloud project that are are making you guys focus on dealing with really large sets of data 
Yeah, absolutely. We have a couple of uh, universities, for example, who have obviously a lot of students, tens of thousands of students, and they care a lot about performance. Uh, for these universities, we've also introduced Kerberos support. I mean, who use Kerberos authentication unless you yeah. hate yourself? Well, universities <laughs> do. So that's why we introduced that. Yes. Um, but these guys also care greatly about performance and scalability especially. So uh, what we did there is we really reduced the load. Um, that the most common operation actually on a Nextcloud server, you would be surprised by that perhaps, but it's not from people syncing files or using the web interface. It is from people who have clients and the clients are checking in to see if there are changes. And they do that every 30 seconds. And if you have 20,000 students who all have one or two clients that are checking every 30 seconds, this creates a massive load. And actually 90, 95% of the load on Nextcloud servers is caused by this. And what we have done is we've optimized the database access especially because usually database is a limiting factor. And we decreased the database load by 80% in the common case. So that means you can handle a lot more students on a single Nextcloud server. And also the overhead, because of that, the overhead for downloading files has decreased. Now, if you download files that are a gigabyte each, the overhead of the Nextcloud server is totally irrelevant, right? Because it takes maybe 150, 200 milliseconds overhead, and then you download the one gigabyte file, which takes I know, a minute or maybe even longer if you have a slow connection. Yeah. But if you're downloading and uploading a lot of small files, it can make a big difference. And we've done a couple of testing, testing uh, tests internally. And in our test circumstances, and they are honestly actually very optimistic, like a local database on an SSD, it was 60% faster with very small files. Okay. Now, if you have your database running on another server, yeah, that actually has to talk via network connection to your Nextcloud, you know, um, front-end server, you can imagine that this percentage might actually be a lot higher even. So I think the scalability and the performance improvements will be very noticeable for large customers. And as I say, we have a bunch, and there are a couple of companies that are looking at million user, multi-million user deployments of Nextcloud and working on that. And some of them already have, uh -huh. you know, hundreds of thousands. So this is very relevant. Obviously. The other thing for me is uh, I'm going to upload stuff to Nextcloud today, and then I'm going to need to know about it from a year and a half from now, and I'm not going to remember much. So I text search and being able to look for phrases and things like that is a huge part of, of like, I'm going to dump stuff here. And I think there's been some pretty nice improvements for full text searching in Nextcloud 11. Yes? Yeah. We introduced full text search support. Uh, Boom! A community member who basically built that based on Apache Solar. So you need to run that either on the server or on the external server. And then it uses that to, to, it can even index the text in images. So if you enable the OCR support, then it will even give you images that have the words that you're looking for in there. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it does everything. PDFs, text files, ODTs, Microsoft Office documents, everything. That's Very great. Cool. That is that is like I'm going to set it up there, I'm going to upload it, and then I'm going to forget it. And then last but not least, I mean, there's probably more things you want to talk about, but this is just my favorite list of stuff uh, because, I don't know, maybe one day I could see – I'll be honest. I've been I've been fantasizing about setting up Nextcloud for uh, our Unfilter patrons, so just mm -hmm. distributing all of the clips for the Unfilter show via Nextcloud. And then we want to have quarterly meetings with our patrons, certain certain patrons that I, I, I yeah. that all the details in the show. I don't need to go into it. And and one of the things that just seems like a slam dunk is well, next cloud eleven could allow us to collaborate. The federation support could obviously be a huge benefit in a show like that. And then something else that I wanted to do, but I wasn't sure what software or service we were going to use, was like a group hangout, like like a hangout, like a Google Plus hangout. But I don't want to use Google Plus, and I. I kind of I'm I'm vaguely aware of a new feature in Nextcloud 11, but if I'm correct, isn't there like video conferencing support now built into Nextcloud? Correct. So we introduced um, experimentally still in this release. Okay. It works only for up to six users at a time, but it's audio and video chat built in uh, into. Is Next this just Cloud. all it's HTML5 free. web it's RTC? It's just an app. Yeah, it's completely like you just go to the App Store and just like any other app, one click installed and then it works um it's 
I think really amazing. You can even send uh, public URLs to people, so you don't they don't actually need to have an account or an extra server. Oh, I love that. Very easily uh, invite people on the server; they will get a notification. So if you have the Nextcloud client running, and you know somebody else invites you to a call on your Nextcloud server, you will get a notification that says, "Hey, you know." Someone just invited you for a call, and you can go click and join the call. Ah, that so is really so nicely cool. really integrated already. Where do you guys yeah. see that going? I mean, because there's, it seems like there's, a, there's about 100 different ways you could integrate that with shared files, with federation support, with all these different things. I mean, where do you, I mean, this is obviously super beginning, so anything you say is just sort of kind of guessing, but where could something go like this with NextCloud? Yeah, we want to we want to integrate this really deep. I mean, anywhere you know you see an avatar, you know, like in the comment section in a file, you should be able to click the avatar and say, okay, call this guy because what he or she just said, outrageous. You know, Are you guys taking on Slack? Are you taking on Slack here? Well, that's a whole different game. I don't I know. know. I'm not saying today. I'm not we saying today. Slack, but sure. I mean, to to integrate it in the same way will then give you some of the abilities of Slack. Sure. I mean, it just seems to reduce the need for Slack. I'll put it that way. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, Slack is of course really focused around this this IRC replacement. Yeah. And we are about files. You know, if you have, for example, Collabora Online uh, installed eh, and you're working on the document and you say, okay, you know, this this is wrong, you should be able to just open a call and just talk with the person. You know that you're working on the document wave in real time while you're editing, and and discuss the document. Even if that person doesn't have an Nextcloud account, this should be possible. Uh, so in Nextcloud 11, you can, and this is actually a feature we haven't advertised yet. Shh. Um, you can actually you share a public folder link with uh, documents in Nextcloud 11, and then you know the person you share the link with, if the sh if it's uh, read write shared, uh, if you give them write permissions. They can open a document, it'll open a Collabora online, and even though they don't have an account, they can edit it together with you. And, well, oh, the video man. already also support that. <sighs> That's big. Together. It's awesome, right? Yeah, yes. that is, that takes it That takes it a step beyond what you can achieve with Google Docs. And Oh, it, yeah. I mean, I don't think any of the others can do this, can they? I mean, can you? I don't, I don't they think all so. Want you to make accounts, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they all, all, they all want your information. They all want you to sign up. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. It is. So, yeah. Uh, before we uh, before we go, is there any other big things that you want to mention, or any other small things you want to give a shout out to, or any other little itty bitty details you want to cover? Well, we went, I think, over all the big stuff. I mean, I just mentioned Collabora Online. Let me also say, aside from this public link sharing, which I think is really cool, um, we also made it a lot faster. Like, it currently takes like up to 10, 15 seconds to start up just like Microsoft Office 360 does, just like Google Docs can be slow. Yeah. Well, right now it's pretty much instant, I can tell you. Oh. And I think that's also a really nice improvement. And there's there's been other changes, like we have a new App Store. Um, yes. The old App Store had a lot of security issues over the last years. I got to say, you guys have really responded to a lot of feedback on the App Store. And in fact, that was something I wanted to mention, is I've been really impressed as a project, the way you guys have responded to that stuff. Well, you know, the thing is, in the old one, we've said this, of course, in multiple interviews, there were a lot of things that were in the way of doing the right thing. Um, and then not, not just, you know, that you say it's commercial pressure because we've done actually a lot of things for customers. Um, it's just that, you know, when you have this pressure from investors, it's just not always in a direction that benefits the long term yeah. of a project, yeah. right? And this is exactly the key we want to build something you know frank said to me a couple of weeks ago he said look you know i want to get old running this company you know he doesn't want another job ever again i love that and that's of course quite different from like an investor who wants out within five years you know and again i don't want to say that that's a bad thing per se but it does result in some short-term decisions and that's not always the right thing for users and customers both and a project like this an open source short term doesn't work you know, it might work yeah. in some other businesses, yeah. but in open source, you have to have a long-term relationship with community, both of users and contributors. Yeah. That's why we have such a hugely growing community, and that's why the company is already profitable. That's great. We are making long-term decisions, and people see that, yeah. as, as you notice. So I, I will say this. Um, uh, if you want to uh, check it out, I did a, I did, I spent 15 minutes 
setting up a system with Nextcloud 10, then 11. I have all of the links in the show notes. I did it on a droplet. I, I installed Nextcloud 11 and 10 using a snap package. It was really flawless. It's it's in testing for me right now. Uh, but I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this before we wrap up. Uh, it gives me, uh, Yas, I'm really glad you shared that. It gives me um, a lot of confidence knowing that uh, that Frank and you want to be at this for a really long time because I've met a lot of people in Linux and open source um, over the years, and uh, there are very, very sh- small number of people that I think are are just the most genuine and the the most actually like uh, what you see is what you get type of people and and you guys are definitely in that category. I think the project is great and what what makes me want to be a next cloud user besides all of the great stuff you've just done is the fact that you guys are behind it and I I've just I've I've met you online, I've met you in person. I met Frank in person. I like I like you guys in both scenarios. I like where this project is going. And so I got to say, it's getting to the point now where if if you don't need some of these little esoteric features of Google Docs or you don't need these esoteric features of Office Online or even Dropbox, NextCloud is so simple to set up. It's so simple to get going. It's really an attractive alternative. I really encourage you guys to go out there and look at it. Yas, maybe one thing we could just wrap and close on is I know there's like a Nextcloud appliance or a device that's sort of in an early stage. Nextcloud box, you mean? Is that or... something people can get their hands on today? Is that something that's available yes, to the general public? definitely available. If you go to nextcloud.com slash box, cannot get any easier. Uh, so we've built this together with Collabora and uh, Canonical. No, not Collabora. With Canonical and with Western Digital. And it's it's a box. It's based uh, on the one terabyte Pi drive from Western Digital Labs. It's very easy to use. You have to bring your own Pi. Um, Collabora, Collabora again, Canonical. Canonical sorry, it's a yeah. seize that. Um, yeah, Canonical is currently working on getting Raspberry Pi 3 support in there. And as soon as that is done, we will publish an image. It was actually planned for last yeah. week, but it's you know, close. we had some last minute snacks. Yeah. But then, yeah, so people can get this appliance it's basically an all-in-one box you have to assemble it yourself i mean gotta be a little geeky right it's super simple it's though as a, as a kind of a reference device like we want other people to pick it up yeah. we, i can tell you we've already sold well over a thousand of them oh congrats so for reference device it's doing pretty well yeah <laughs> you know um it's yeah it's a really yeah. cool project and so, i have already some other people playing with this stuff so it is. Uh, it is actually. It was a topic of discussion on this week's episode of Linux Unplugged. Uh, Martin, aka Wimpy, uh, got it working on a Raspberry Pi three, and he gives all of the details on last Tuesday's Linux Unplugged, where we talked about the next cloud box. Super cool device. In fact, maybe we'll build one here in the future. I, I think the next cloud project with version eleven, they've really turned it up past ten. You got to go check it out. We'll have links in the show notes. Thanks to Yas for joining us. That's the Linux Action Show's look at next cloud. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast. But before we go on, I want to mention System76. System76.com. How would you say it, Noah? I would say System76.com. What was that? And I would check out the Lenner. System76.com. System. System. System, 76. system, 76. 76. 76. Yeah, no. Why would I go there? Noah? No, why would well, I go there? Because you have a bunch of computers and they all natively run Linux right out of the box. Better natively? than that, natively, they, oh, they come, natively, natively, natively. It's like you were born to run Linux. No. And then on top of that, you get support. They oh. support you. So if you ever have a problem oh. with your computer, you can call a number. And also, if you order, then you tell them that I switch you to Linux because we all know that I mm-hmm. did. And then Emma will throw a bunch of really cool things in your package. You'll get like, a super speaker like a sticker package. Could be a sticker. Could be free shipping. Could be I. I don't know. It's just, it, yeah. it, it just depends. Totally oh, depends. You, you never know what they, those guys are going to do. System seventy six. Go they, there. Yeah. System. They do service. We don't talk about their service enough. They make great service. Really System seventy six dot com. Go there. Check them out. Now, if okay. I am following Noah's lead and I'm totally new, I. It's not that. It's I, I've never heard of this company. I'm I'm I, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, guys. I can't I can't recommend this company to you. I've never heard of this company. You know, back in the day, 
10 years ago, when I started a company, I recommended and I said, I will not work here unless you give me this type of laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what, Noah? System, system 76? 76. I, I've never heard of that before. Where do I go? Where do so, I go, Noah? Well, I, t I tell you what. I tell you what, if you're in my office, you just head for the door. If somebody could walked in and they said, here's your System 76 laptop back, I don't want that, I won't uh, work here unless you give me a blah, 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 I would say, listen, the tail doesn't wag the dog. That's not how it works here, mm. chump. Yeah, this yeah. is the laptop you'll use. Yeah. And, uh, and if you don't like yeah. it, there's the door. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. The thing is that they're actually, I've never really had anyone bring their computer back in and say that they didn't really like it because they just work out of the box and that's great. And that's really helpful if yeah. you run a company that sure. has everyone using Linux. Yeah, and it, it's like they went through the best desktops, the best laptops, and the best servers possible. And they said, these would be the best machines running Linux. And, and, and then, like some sort of crazy fox, they started to sell them. So go over to system76.com, tell them the Linux Action Show sent you, and grab a machine and tell them that Noah, that guy right there in Grand Forks, where it's below 20 degrees Celsius, at least Fahrenheit. No, Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> System76.com, tell them the Linux Action Show sent you, oh, ho, 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 and tell them that Noah, that guy over in Grand Forks, that one guy in North Dakota, Grand Forks, Switch it to Linux. Switch it to Linux. All right. Now, Alex wrote in, and he wants to t tell us about his school presentation. He says, hey, Noah, uh, really, and his disability. Hey, Noah and Chris, so I have an anxiety disorder that makes giving presentations a bit dangerous for me. Think passing out, bashing your face into things. Oh, yeah, man. So I get, accommodation from my, so I get accommodations from my university, uh, RCPD, which basically means that I have a little legal weight uh, to any discussion I have with teachers to set up alternatives to giving presentation. This semester, one of my teachers is allowing me to make a slide deck of research that I did and record me giving the presentation in audio only and turn it in rather than actually presenting in front of the class. I wasn't sure how I was going to manage the recording side of things in Linux. I run Linux exclusively. And so none of, and none of the te teacher's su suggestions worked out. But then I remember you guys talking about OBS and I thought, hey, it's in the AUR. So I thought I'll give it a, uh, I'll see if it does what I need it to do. And sure enough, it does. It's exactly what I needed for my final presentation. I only knew it existed because I heard you guys talk about it. So I just wanted to say thanks. It's not, the, it's, the first recommend, it's not the first recommendation I've gotten from last, but it's definitely the first one that helps me actually get school done. Uh, so we helped somebody with a liability or a disability. We helped him work through his disability with an app pick that we featured on the show that you'll keep installed on your computer for the rest of your life. Isn't yeah. that great? Yeah. Like all the picks. All the like picks. All the picks. Yeah. Every last one. That is all that, installed. That is super awesome. All right. So the next one comes in from Stefan with an R. Stefan R. writes in. He says, uh, so I heard that Noah has finally switched to Arch. Maybe Antargos. I decided, <laughs> I decided it was time to uh, look at this and maybe ask a few more questions. How did you get the hybrid graphics to work, Noah? Damn it, Noah. Answer me this question. I have a 17.3 Asus laptop with an i5. And get ready for this. It's a 5200 U. So get your face ready because this has an NVIDIA graphics 920M with the Samsung SSD. And uh, I'd like to know, I've got this set up, but I do not have Mr. Noah, the switching graphics. How have you made this work? Sir! I don't, actually. I, I just have integrated graphics, so I, I haven't gotten it to work. I've never even tried. But I know that you have, haven't you, in a couple different machines. Eee! Oh, eee! No? Eee! Maybe? Maybe a little bit? I just Maybe not so much. Well, I, I just have chosen to use the dedicated graphics, and I'm super mm. solid with that. Like I am like 100% solid and fine with that. I and I and I really I, I looked at the Arch Wiki. I looked at the different ways to do this, and for me personally, mm -hmm. four and a half battery hours is totally acceptable. I I will live with mm, mm, on, on the upper side. I will live with five hours of battery life, and I'm okay with that. Mm. How, I haven't tried it, so I, I have no idea. But you, Mr. Lenovo lover over there, with your nine-cell battery, you have like oh, hours and hours and hours of battery life. So go ahead, I Noah. I don't quite go far as to say I'm a Lenovo lover, but I do have a ThinkPad, and the this thing, despite what the Lenovo sales rep will tell you, there are two batteries in this. There's a three-cell battery in the front, and then there's a nine-cell battery at the back. So I get about... 14, 15 hours uh, a charge. It's gotten to the point that I used, I don't even carry a charger with me in my day bag anymore. 
There's one. At, well, uh, there's a, just one connected to the dock at home, and it just I charge it at night, and I don't touch it. I don't have one with me right now, and it's been on the entire day. So with so, so you have a built-in three-cell battery. Mm-hmm. And you Lenovo a, denies that, by the way, but yes, that's what it is. See, I mean, just to be clear, you can like. Mm-hmm. Do you have your laptop right now? Yeah, here I'll take the battery out. Thank you. So, so laptop's on. Oh, well, uh, not out. yet, not yet, not yet. It's not on that yet. Li- Here's the thing. Okay, this, this it's waking is, up. I blame Light DM for this. So there's right, Light there DM. Is, okay? Yep. So, so I take the battery out, which is this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. See if I get this. Like, there we go. Let's see if I get that unlocked. This. Aha. 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 So take the battery out, and the laptop still stays on. Uh-huh. Now and then I can switch it with and I can put another battery. Now Lenovo will tell you that it's not a three cell battery; it's the power center that allows the laptop to stay on without the battery in there. But it's a three cell battery in the front <laughs> yeah. of the computer. It's the, like, I literally the got into an argument center. with the sales rep about that. Yeah, he's like, "No, no, it's not a battery; it's a power center." I'm like, "So it's a battery?" He's like, "No, it's a battery." I'm like, "So it's a battery that you call the power center?" He's like, "No, no, it's a, it's a battery." I'm like, "It's a three cell <laughs> battery." No, whatever. But it works. You can swap batteries yeah. under Ubuntu, and Ubuntu sees or Anagros actually Arch. Yeah, it sees Thunderbolt. two. It sees two batteries, right? So you can right. you and can it manage them individually, right? And I took the just because I was curious. I took the the main cell out. I can get about two hours, three hours on just three cell in the front of the computer. So it significantly adds to the amount of time that I get three you know, hours usable time. About that, yep. Mm-hmm. About that. No, mind you, that's not video editing or do. That's just that's browsing the internet in terminals and checking email. But yeah, fact. Let's see. I'll take the battery out now because it's at one hundred percent, and I'll leave the laptop on. Let's see what it gets by the you know hour show. Probably forty five minutes left. Let's see how far it drains in forty five minutes. <laughs> that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 for the last two years, I've mostly used my battery as a uh, well. This gets me between where I have an AC plug and I have an AC plug. I can I can survive on standby. I can survive for two hours on battery life. So mm-hmm. what do you get? Like roughly, like if you were not going to plug that son of a bitch in, what would you get? Mm-hmm. 13 hours ish. I can go my entire working day and still have enough energy that when I get home, I can eat dinner, watch Netflix on my laptop and make it all the way into the bedroom where I set it in my bedroom dock before I go to sleep and never ha- plug in. I never, I've never plugged the laptop. And I know somebody else that has the same model and he does the exact same thing. He, and he works on his computer. He codes, he's a coder. And he, so he spends the entire day on his laptop and comes home at night and plugs his laptop in. He doesn't take a power brick to him at work at all. You have it. Wait, you have a docking station in your bedroom? Yeah, I've got one downstairs in my workstation that has two monitors connected, and then I've got one in my bedroom that just has a single monitor. <laughs> well, if one, it's to charge it at night, but two is in the morning when I get up and I want to check my email and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't want to do it on a tiny little phone. Like, <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I'll take it. I'll believe it. I, I mean, that's I great. have a laptop stand in my bathroom, dude. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, pr- I'm pretty next level when it comes to being on my laptop. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not kidding about that. I actually sent Chris pictures when I installed it. Yeah. All right. So Stefan writes in. <laughs> just, just take a second. I'm sorry. Uh, he says, uh, since I heard that Noah finally switched to Arch and to cut it. We read this already, right? Did we? Oh. Yes. You read two. Both read. You read email no, one and two. You read the other. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you really have lost it. You read the second email. I, you answered the second email. I don't give a shit, dude. <laughs> You're the one making me do this. I don't give a shit. Oh my god! <laughs> this is the best episode ever. I tell did you, you answer it? Did you? Did you do a good? No, job? you did. You answered the email. No, no, no. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Oh. Well, now what? Hey guys, thanks a lot for being with us. This brings us. Are to you the kidding end of the me? Show. Are you that thing? If you. If, if you would like to find so more out about gonna, the show, head over to the You're re- not going to read Stefan's email at all? We read Stefan's email. We read it. We answered it. It is done. The feedback segment is over. No. Finito. Finished. No. Done. No. No. Answered. No. No. Stefan says. All right, Chris. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Stefan says, hey there. Okay. I right. heard that you guys right. use hybrid graphics. Yeah. I have yeah. a 17.3 Asus laptop uh-huh. with a 15-inch. I. Uh, it's got an, oh, my inch? God, dude. <laughs> what? Sorry. No, I'm sorry. Keep going. Let's answer his question. So he would like to know about hybrid graphics. Yeah. I, uh, t- I, t- I didn't, I actually didn't switch hybrid graphics. I just use Intel. So, uh, Chris, I know that you've done this a couple of times. Yeah. T- how did your experience go? Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. I'm switching between. Yeah, I'll yeah, go for you. Use Nvidia. Yeah. Oh. Oh, is that what you do? You use Nvidia. I didn't know that. Thanks for answering that. Really? Thanks, Stephen, for writing in. And I you're hope just, you got you're just gonna totally crap all over this guy's email. Would you like to answer it a third time? <laughs> I just. I mean, I don't. How many times are we gonna do this? You know, really, I think you're being unfair to Alex. He only got his question answered once. <laughs> I just, I okay, like fine. We'll just skip this guy's email, I guess. I guess. Like, what's the point? Go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash contact because email, you know, Noah doesn't care about your email. He hates you. He hates you. I care about you, but Noah hates you. It's true that I only want to answer your emails <laughs> once. That is true. And that is true. So if you want to get your emails answered multiple times, send them to Chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com. <laughs> Alan. He'll, Alan. We'll just... Alan, Alan at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Yeah. Yeah. Will he do the? Will he, will he put the answers on repeat? Do a spin cycle? No, no. Send him to Chris. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, Mister Boss. Take us out. Take us all out. Right. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Linux Action Show. If you like the content, do you want to have input? We rely on your input. Head over to Reddit.com/slash/r/slash. Slash Linux Action Show. Yeah, I think there's job. a shorter URL. You're doing, no, you're doing good. You're Linux doing really good. Action, <laughs> Reddit.com. Hey, listen, that's not the important way to get us feedback. The important no. way to get us feedback is head over to jupiterbroadcasting.com, click on the contact link, choose Linux Action Show from the drop-down menu. I will put your feedback in the show and answer oh. it one time and one time only. That guy is Chris LAS. You can follow him, the network, at Jupiter Signal. I'm at Kernel Linux. My company is at Alta Speed. Don't forget to join us for Linux Unplugged, which is the companion show to this show, and you see a lot of back and forth uh, and shared ideas. That is Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Central. I have no idea what it is specific, but you don't have to know because you can go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar, and it'll convert the time to your I hate you. time zone. If you'd like... If you'd like to see more of us, we hope to see you back here next week at the same JV time, same JV place, jupiterbroadcasting.com or jvlife.com. <laughs> pretty good that was pretty good that was that was pretty good and enjoy the best of next week merry christmas and little Noah, it's the first time he'd ever been, had been exposed to cable television and he goes dad i want to watch you know whatever aladdin and i'm like yeah so it doesn't work like that here dude you um see we you have oh, there's a set yeah, number of yeah, channels yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you scroll through yeah them. yeah and then you got to pick, right? And like, it blew his mind. And then when he got done watching, he's like, I want to watch it again. I'm like, no, you can't. You and can't then do commercials. That, dude. And Sorry, like, buddy. Just, and, and here's the thing. It takes it takes a five-year-old to look at you like, who the hell invented this nonsense? And why would anyone do this? This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yep. I just asked dad for the episode, shows up on the thing, and I watch it. Why would anyone do this? And then, and then you add to that, and he's like, yeah, not only that kid, he paid $200 a month to have this. No, I don't have TV service. They couldn't even wrap their head around that, I don't think. No, he didn't. He was like, he, he's like, and the problem is I can't even answer. Like, I'm laughing. I can't answer his questions honestly. He's like, are, are you kidding me right now? You know, usually anytime I say something, Rakai takes the opposite stance. I think mostly just because he likes to antagonize me. But he's like, he's right on the ball. TV is not local media. It's not stored on my box. I don't own it. I can't retain it. Therefore, I shut it. <laughs> if you if you edited Noah out of the show, it would make Chris Lass look totally insane. That's what. Uh... <laughs> I think that's a compliment. I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think that's good, dude. <laughs> Captain's log, Stardate 1111.4. I'm stuck on a live stream, waiting for my co host. Now, this is all part of an elaborate plan to protect the timeline and save the whales because I am from the future and I have traveled back in time to host this Linux podcast to make sure the society adopts Linux that way Starfleet can be successful. Drink. Anything? We good? All good? Did you do this? Could, could, okay. Hey here. Noah, could you quit? Yeah. Hey Noah, screwing around. Hey yes. Noah. Uh huh. Could you? I mean, I'm sorry, no. but okay. Could you? Could you quit screwing around? Yes, I could. Okay. Yeah. All right. Time to do the show. I got you.